Go ahead and call uh, the uh, committee to, uh, to order. Good morning, everyone. I, uh, I don't know if anybody uh, ever watched any Star, War, uh, Star Wars movies. I, my sister and I grew up on them, and uh, somebody reminded me that today. What is today's date? May, May, 4th. May the 4th, May 4th be, with be with you. you. May the 4th be with you. My staff, they wanted me to wear this. I, I am not going to wear this, but I will hold it up so I can keep them off of my back. <laughs> All right. Fortunately, the the fourth the force is with this committee more often than not, and it's we're just uh, Shelley and I were just talking about what a joy it is. Uh, today we have the opportunity to uh, do the people's work, and uh, as we've been doing it uh, for a number of years, and uh, I just want to say uh, just a real special thank you to our uh, our staff. Well, we get the credit for, for legislation like this, but the our staffs work very very hard, and together we uh, are grateful to to them on both both sides of the aisle. But you don't, uh, we don't get to, uh, to mark up major infrastructure legislation every day. And I'm glad we could do it uh, this day, although we do it a lot. We do it a lot. Uh, this morning, we're going to vote on the nomination of Benny Wagner to be Inspector General of the Tennessee Valley Authority. We're also going to be voting on six uh, General Service Administration resolutions. We'll then uh, mark up the Water Resources Development Act of 2022, also known as WERDA. Before we uh, do, uh, just a few words about our bipartisan work on this important piece of uh, water resources legislation. The 2022 uh, WERDA bill is the result of, literally of months of bipartisan collaboration. I uh, want to, good morning, Ben. I want to take a moment to thank uh, Senators Capito, Cardin, Kramer. That's a lot of C's. Yeah, yeah that is a lot of C's. Yeah. Uh, other members of our committee and our staffs as well for the hard work in getting this legislation ready for consideration today. Word of 2022 embodies the bipartisan spirit of this committee and reflects our record of delivering critical investments and important policies for our country and for all of our states on a regular basis. Our bill continues the two-year cycle for Word of Bills, uh, ensuring timely congressional authorization for the Army Corps' studies and projects that support our economy restore critical ecosystems, and protect our communities from extreme weather, like flooding and like drought. I'm particularly proud that our legislation better equips the, uh, the Army Corps to address the threat that uh, climate change poses to our coastal communities. And as I've highlighted for this uh, committee before, more than 128 million people in our country live in coastal counties. Think about that. 128 million people in our country live in coastal counties. I'm told that about half the, uh, the nation's population lives within 50 miles of one of our coasts. If our coastal counties were their own nation, they would rank third in the world in gross domestic product. Think about that. If our coastal counties were their own nation, they would rank third in the world in gross domestic product, beaten only by China and by the, the U.S. A recent report from the National Ocean, Oceanic, Ocean, uh, Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration projects that the threat of sea level rise will accelerate in the next uh, 30 years without intervention by us and others. To address this, our legislation uh, reestablishes re the protection and restoration of shorelines and riverbanks from erosion and other damaging forces as a primary mission of the Army Corps. Our bill also streamlines the implementation of shoreline and riverbank protection and restoration projects to aid the communities most vulnerable to climate change impacts. And just as significantly, it empowers communities to partner with the Corps to develop projects that directly address the impact of extreme weather, including drought. As, Senator, as Senators Creamer, Lummis, Padilla, and, and uh, Kelly can attest, Western states continue to experience severe drought conditions. The word at uh, 2022 helps our Western states by authorizing the Corps to do significant work to mitigate the impact of repetitive droughts and conserve water supplies. And last but certainly not least, word at 22 prioritizes equity in the Corps' civil works program. Our legislation establishes a new tribal and disadvantaged communities advisory committee to advise the Corps on ways to more effectively deliver projects programs and other assistance to tribal and other economically disadvantaged communities. Our bill also extends the authorization for the Tribal Partnership Program through 2033. Requires assistance to economically uh, disadvantaged uh, communities to be prioritized under the Corps' existing 
Planning Assistance to States program and authorizes a new work, uh, workforce development and STEM outreach program at the core with priority given to economically disadvantaged communities. Now, if you can't uh, tell, I'm pretty excited on this May 4th and about our bipartisan package. I often say that the bipartisan solutions are lasting solutions. And with that in mind, let me say again how proud I am to lead this committee with our ranking member, Senator Capito. And I've worked uh, uh, with, uh, very closely with Senators Cardin and Kramer and their staffs uh, on this legislation. Your partnerships uh, and leadership uh, folks on this legislation helped us to get here today. In fact, without you uh, and your staff, we wouldn't be here today. Our committee has shown yet again that we can come together across the aisle to help meet the pressing water infrastructure needs of the American people. And with that having been said, let me turn it over to Ranking Member Senator Capito for her comments. Senator Capito. Thank you, Chairman Carper, for calling this business meeting and for your commitment to continuing our bipartisan efforts. I'm very proud that we're uh, here with our word of legislation today. Uh, as we know, Congress authorizes water resources projects and sets national policies for the Civil Works Program of the U.S. Corps of Engineers. The work of the Corps protects the lives and livelihoods of millions of Americans and facilitates commerce throughout this country and internationally. If you look at the different projects, you can see the vastness of our nation just displayed uh, throughout this bill. Since 2014, uh, Congress has enacted word of legislation every two years. Under our former chairman, we did this as well, and I'm thrilled that we reached a bipartisan agreement to continue that tradition of addressing our nation's water resources needs. In addition to the chairman, I also want to thank um, Senators Cardin and Kramer. Uh, we are the four C's, uh, which means commitment for their leadership on the subcommittee on transportation and infrastructure. Your support and partnership during this process was integral to reaching this solid agreement. I would also like to thank your staff, Mr. Chairman, and uh, in particular, your staff director, Mary Francis. And I'm just going to go through the first names. John Maley, Tyler, Jordan, and Milo. Thank you all very much. And on my side, I'd like to thank Adam, my staff director, and also Murphy, Kim, Jacob, Catherine, and Max for their dedication and their uh, long hours of work on this. Today proves again the ability of this committee to develop bipartisan infrastructure legislation that addresses the needs of our members and the communities they represent. True to the Corps' tradition, this bill moves forward projects that will benefit both local communities and the entire country. For example, we are authorizing a significant project for coastal storm risk management on the coast of Texas that will ensure critical port assets can continue to serve our country's shipping and supply chain needs moving forward. This project will help mitigate the worst impacts of hurricanes for local communities. It will also provide a vital corridor for our nation's energy industry. At this committee, as this committee has heard during its oversight hearing on the Corps' response to Hurricane Ida, when constructed, these coastal projects work to prevent the worst effects of storm and storm damage. And while this bill is very much oriented towards advancing critical projects in our state, it also includes several policy changes that will help the Corps succeed better in its mission. At the beginning of the process, I outlined some of the areas in which I believe change would be beneficial. Mm -hmm. I said we needed to ensure more effective delivery of projects and reduce the confusion that some of our communities have experienced in dealing with the core. This bill includes several provisions that will improve flexibility with regard to financial accounting for projects. It requires reporting on timelines for the environmental review process for projects, and it authorizes for the first time a dedicated research and development account for the core to spur innovation and provides contracting flexibility in undertaking these activities. It opens the black box of the Corps by bolstering the agency's technical assistance authorities and providing a new advisory committee for non-federal interests to voice their opinions on how the Corps can better meet their water resources needs. The input of non-federal interests of the Corps is critical. We've had testimony to that effect. And we pre preserve the integral role of non-federal cost share partners in the project delivery process by avoiding mandates from D.C. In addition to my role as ranking member, I represent the great state of West Virginia, and I work to address several of the needs of my home state, and I'd share a few highlights. This legislation advances a critical flood control project in the city of Milton, West Virginia. Authorized in the 90s, this project is a long time coming, and I'm proud to have helped forward it. The bill also supports flood control studies for the Canal River Basin and the city of Huntington, and it continues to provide environmental infrastructure assistance to communities throughout my state. In closing, there's a lot in this bill for both sides of the aisle for communities across the country. 
It is the culmination of a true bipartisan effort and represents our shared goal of addressing our nation's water resources needs. I urge my colleagues to support this legislation. Today, we're also voting, as you know, on GSA resolutions and the nomination of Benny Wagner to serve as Inspector General of the TVA. Thank you for your continued partnership, Chairman Carper, as we find ways to work together and get things done for our country. Thank you so much. And again, uh, uh, as you were uh, calling off the names of the, the senior staff who've worked on, on these bills, uh, I just want to say, uh, again, a special thanks to all, all of you. Um, well, I see uh, that we have uh, a quorum here present today. I want to thank everybody for making time to join us. In the first uh, item of business, I'm going to call up presidential nomination 1250, Benny R. Wagner of Tennessee, to be the Inspector General of the Tennessee Valley Authority. I move to approve and report the nomination favorably to the Senate. Is there a second? Second. Been moved and seconded. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. In opinion of the chair, the ayes have it and the nomination is favorably reported. I know for the record that a quorum of the committee is present. And next, I, I want to call up six resolutions relating to the General Services Administration. As members of this uh, committee know, we routinely approve GSA prospectuses by committee resolution. The resolutions we consider today are for GSA leases throughout our country. Members have had the opportunity to review these documents, and I believe them to now be non-controversial. And uh, uh, before we, we vote on it, uh, 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 Senator Cardin, would you yeah, just, like to say something just about Just very the briefly, uh, I'm going to support all the resolutions. As you know, I've been very concerned about GSA implementing our prospectus as it relates to the FBI consolidated facilities in the Washington region. I've been assured by GSA that in regards to the Kentucky prospectus that's before us, there is no planning to relocate permanent uh, personnel from the National Capital Region, and I've also been advised by the Appropriation Committee staff that uh, there is no movement of personnel from the National Capital Region envisioned in this perspective, so therefore I will support it. Thanks. Thanks. For, anyone else wish to comment on any of the resolutions? Uh, if not, uh, I'd like to uh, consider these six GSA resolutions on block and by voice vote. I move to report these items favorably. Is there a second? Second. It's been moved and seconded. Mm -hmm. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say nay. The uh, the ayes have it in the opinion of the chair. The ayes have it. The resolutions are approved. And again, I note for the record that a quorum of the committee is president. And uh, next, we're going to turn to consideration of Wawarta Water Resources Development Act of 2022. This uh, original bill has been developed with input from all members over the last five months. Let me say that again. With input from all members, not just all members of this committee, but all members of the United States Senate. I want to thank uh, all members of the committee, especially for the constructive engagement. I want to thank our colleagues who are not on this committee for being part of the team that helped put this to, together. One of my favorite the sayings is uh, from one of the King sisters who work in my staff back in Delaware. Is, uh, 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 when the, when the, uh, uh, on. something about, uh, I'll think of it in a second. <laughs> so, uh, it's, it's teamwork. There we go. Here we go. Teamwork makes the dream work. Isn't that great? Teamwork makes the dream work. The original uh, bill has been divided, again, with input from a lot of folks, including a lot of folks in this room and not in this room. I especially want to thank Senator Capito for her leadership and her staff. I want to thank Senator Cardin to him and his team and Senator Creamer to you and, and your team and your role as ranking member in this, the, uh, the subcommittee. And I think we've come uh, together in legislation that we can be uh, really proud of. I understand that two amendments have been filed by Senator Inhofe, Ranking Member Alvin Capito, Senator Cardin, Senator Cream, and I'll agree that in off amendment number two is acceptable. Therefore, I uh, want to call up uh, uh, Senator Inhofe's amendment number two and uh, move that we adopt it by a voice vote. Uh, all in favor say aye. aye. All opposed say nay. The ayes have it in the chairman. Chairman's views, the ayes have it, and the uh, amendment is agreed to. I now move that the committee uh, report the Water Resources Development Act of 2022 as amended. And before I ask for a second, let me just say, Senator Inhofe, uh, you'll be afforded the opportunity to speak uh, about uh, either of your amendments, or both of them, uh, later on uh, when we finish voting. Yeah, when we finish, yeah, you bet. Senator, uh, Senator Stabenow. 
Mr. Chairman, I just wanted to say thank you to you and our ranking member. Um, this is really important, Bill. Appreciate all the input and from the Great Lakes states. I, I just want to tell you that um, for those of us who care deeply about the 95% uh, of the fresh water in the country, which is in the Great Lakes, this is, has important policies to support our water. So thank you. Yep. Thanks so much. S S Senator Whitehouse. Thank you, Chairman, and thank you also to the ranking member. I just wanted to uh, flag that I have been a fairly uh, persistent inquirer about the Army Corps so-called coastal and inland flooding account, which uh, sometimes puts a dollar into inland flooding for every penny it puts into coastal flooding. So for us coastal states, particularly ones looking at sea level rise and worse storm surges and all of that, that seems like a pretty unfair situation. And um, I just want to express my appreciation to the chair and the ranking member for the agreement that is not in this bill, but that is part of the negotiating process that the committee will ask GAO for a proper report on this discrepancy, which runs between 20 to 1 and 100 to 1 uh, year to year. I think it's high time we got rid of it. Getting a good explanation of it is a good start and getting the committee's support for that request moves it up the priority level at GAO, so that will uh, help us try to address this discrepancy, and I just wanted to express my gratitude. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you for, those, uh, for those words. Uh, any, anyone else want to uh, uh, comment before we get, uh, get to voting? Okay. Uh, well, now I, I'm pleased to move that the committee report the Water Resources Development Act of 2022 as amended. Is there a second? Second. Uh, the clerk will now call the roll. Bowman. Yes. Mrs. Cavalier. Aye. Mr. Carter. Aye. Mr. Kramer. Aye. Mr. Duckworth. Let's see. She votes aye by proxy. Mr. Ernst. Aye. Mr. Graham. Aye by proxy. Mr. Aye. Mr. Kelly. Aye. Ms. Lummis. Aye by proxy. Mr. Markey. Aye. Mr. Merkin. Aye by proxy. Mr. Padilla. Aye. Mr. Sanders. Aye by proxy. Mr. Shelby. Aye by proxy. Ms. Cavanaugh. Aye. Mr. Sullivan. Aye by proxy. Mr. Whitehouse. Aye. Mr. Wicker. Aye by proxy. Mr. Chairman. Aye. Chairman, the yeas are 20 and the are 0. <laughs> The I have the A's are say that again, twenty to zero? I like that. The A's are twenty, the A's are zero. All right, good. Yeah. Senator Duckworth, may I want to cast your vote in person. Senator Duckworth, would you like to cast your vote in person? I would, Mr. All right. All right. Thanks so much. Well that uh, we're uh, united and uh, we're twenty to zero, twenty A's, zero nays, and legislation is favorably reported. That uh, concludes the committee's votes uh, as part of the business meeting today. Uh, Teamwork does make the dream work. Mr. Mr. Kelly, yeah, did, you, did you wish? Let me just f finish uh, one, and I'll just yield to you and uh, Senator Inhofe. Um, commit that uh, concludes our, uh, our meeting today. These votes are part of the business meeting. And I thank, uh, again, all the members for your participation. I now recognize members that would like to speak in any of the filed amendments. So the items that we have voted on today, starting with Senator Inhofe, Senator, Senator Inhofe, and I know it's Senator Mr. Kelly. Chairman, can I just yes, interrupt sir, for one second? I, I was going to give a lengthy statement uh, in thanking you for your great work and Senator Capito for a great Gentlemen's work. Gentlemen's recognized. But I will just put the, my statement in the record with your consent. All right. Thank you so much, Ben. Thank you. All right. Senator Inhofe, please. Former uh, member of our committee. Former member, you've, you've done a lot of these, haven't you? I'm sorry? You've done a lot of these uh, water bills, haven't you? This, yeah. That's right. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I do want to uh, comment on uh, my amendment number one, which is the Altus project. If I can just uh, need to get this in the record, and I would appreciate the uh, attention of our of our members. And I thank you, uh, Chairman Carver, and uh, and Ranking Member Capito for your leadership on this committee, and for your work on the uh, on the 2022 Word and Bill. Good work. Thanks. Good good job, and uh, you know we. It kind of demonstrates that we have been doing this for a lot of years now, working together as opposed to working apart. And I appreciate it. I'm proud to support the legislation which makes important investments in the civil works projects across Oklahoma and the nation. I offered an amendment that mirrors legislation that I've introduced this Congress that 
amends the provision of the 2018 WERDA bill that directly affects Oklahoma. I might add, it affects only, uh, only Oklahoma. Uh, in 2015, the Bureau of Reclamation identified costly repairs needed to prevent the probability of failure and the uh, 2018 WERDA bill included a provision that was intended to ensure the dam and dike safety modifications costs uh, would be completely at the uh, cost of uh, 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 federal government. Uh, my amendment clarifies congressional intent to uh, ensure that the approximately $40 million in dam and dike safety modernizations uh, repairs and required by the reclamation, that's the Bureau of Reclamation, at the WC Austin project in Altus are entirely federal as Congress intended in the 2018 um, uh, word of bill. At that time, I believe I might have been uh, the chairman of this uh, committee. I recognize my amendment is outside of EPA's jurisdiction and I remain committed to continue to work with uh, ENR, that's in Environment and, and, uh, and Natural Resources, um, Energy and Natural Resources, Chairman uh, Manchin and the Ranking Member uh, uh, Barrasso to advance this legislation before their committee, because it has to go to their committee where the jurisdiction is to make this a reality. My request to the Chair and the Ranking Member of this committee is that as I work with the leadership of the ENR committee to advance this legislation, that you both work with me to get this needed provision uh, into law. Mr. Chairman. Happy to do it. Uh, we understand this, uh, the amendment is uh, outside the jurisdiction of this committee, but it is uh, appropriately before uh, energy and natural resources, and we'll be pleased to try to be uh, an enabler in that. In that Very regard. good. Thank you. Good. Thanks. Um, and uh, before I turn, uh, Senator Enhoff uh, has shared with uh, all of us that uh, is uh, uh, he's going to be uh, moving on uh, toward the, the end of the year, but we got a lot of time between now and the end of the year. We do. And a lot of good work to do. This yeah. is just one, one piece of it. But, Actually, uh, uh, until the 3rd of January, so we have three extra days that you don't know about. <laughs> <laughs> we will make every one of them count. Very good, very count. good, thank you. All right, <laughs> S Senator Kelly. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thank you for all the hard work on this bill. It's uh, incredibly important for the state of Arizona. And I do want to discuss a little bit about what's in here with regards to, you know, WERDA in 2022. Um, as many folks know, Arizona's facing the worst drought conditions experienced uh, along the Colorado River in more than 1,200 years. Uh, last year, we saw a Tier 1 shortage declared on the river, prompting water cuts for users throughout the state. And this year, we're going to face uh, a real risk of water levels in Lake Powell falling so low that hydropower cannot be produced, risking not just water deliveries for the lower Colorado River Basin, but also depriving communities throughout the western United States of a reliable source of renewable energy. And if we don't act, we could see even more dire outcomes in years to come. And it's critical that we have a whole government response to the drought condi conditions in Arizona and throughout the western United States. Uh, we're taking a step forward with today's bill that ensures the Army Corps of Engineers can play a more significant role in responding to drought conditions and support several Arizona projects for the first time in their history, first time. Our bill gives the Army Corps the authority to address drought risk management and water supply conservation needs when planning, constructing, and operating water resources development projects and programs. This is a big deal for Arizona. While the Army Corps already operates dams, reservoirs, and flood control structures in the state, the Corps does not have a permanent authority to plan or construct projects for the purpose of reducing drought risk. Our bipartisan bill changes that. And it's going to allow the Corps to ensure projects built or operated in Arizona help conserve our scarce water resources. And these changes will allow the Army Corps to work alongside local sponsors in Arizona to construct new projects that will help Arizona store more of our scarce water. It'll also help us improve our water conveyance infrastructure, 
to find more ways to reduce water loss. And importantly, the bill also reauthor reauthorizes the Tribal Partnership Program through 2033. This is used by the Corps to help fund water infrastructure improvements in Arizona's tribal communities. It also establishes a new dedicated program focused on helping improve water storage and conservation efforts at dams and reservoirs in the western United States. And it increases funding available for the Western Water Infrastructure Program, which allows the Corps to support water infrastructure projects for small and rural communities throughout Arizona. And since this program was created in the last WERDA, the Corps has already backed 20 projects across the state of Arizona, and this additional support will help us complete at least 75 additional projects. This bill also honors our commitment to Arizona tribal communities by ensuring tribes can participate in the Corps' abandoned and inactive non-coal mine restoration program without needing to meet a burdensome, burdensome cost share. This will be a game changer for efforts to clean up the more than 500 abandoned uranium mines on the Navajo Nation. And finally, the bill cuts through the red tape to ensure that the Army Corps projects in Flagstaff and along the Rio Salado in Phoenix can continue work without needing additional budgetary approvals. And I was able to secure some language to make sure that the Corps expedites its completion of projects in the West Valley, in Cave Creek, in Winslow, Eloy, Globe, Douglas, and where Gabby and I live in Tucson. In closing, this bill delivers meaningful and important wins for Arizona, and I'm grateful to you, Mr. Chairman, and to Ranking Member Capito and all the members of the committee for, well, your leadership and partnership in crafting this important bipartisan bill. I yield back. Thank you. Thank you, thank you for that. That's, that's a, an impressive list of accomplishments in this one bill for, uh, for your state. I, I, I just want to make sure I, I heard correctly what you said at the beginning of, of your comments. I, I wrote down the worst drought condition in 1,200 years, for what part of your state again? So for, for the western part of the United States, so 1,200 years we have not seen, and the way we know this, Mr. Chairman, is we can look at tree rings um, and see, you can tell from taking a section of a tree, and some trees that we have, they might not be standing anymore, but you, ha you can go back 1,200 years, and you can tell, um, you know, using the science, what the moisture content of the, of the ground was at the time. And this is the worst drought in 1,200 years. It's been going on for about 20 years, and it presents serious challenges. I don't know if you saw the latest on Lake Mead and Lake Powell, you know, levels, um, but we're going to have to, f we're potentially going to have to face some more serious cuts. Now, this bill and the bipartisan infrastructure bill that has $8 billion for Western water infrastructure goes a long way towards getting us to, to solve this problem. And I do believe we will. We will engin engineer ourselves out of this. We've got the best engineers and scientists in the world, and we can, we can address this. Thank you. Yeah, you bet. A lot of times we focus, and I mean, a lot of us are from coastal states uh, on this committee and in the, in the Senate, and we focus on sea level rise, which right. is a huge concern for, for us in Delaware and, and throughout the, the, uh, the East Coast, West Coast, the Gulf Coast. And the, uh, uh, Senator Cassidy was saying just the other day in a meeting that uh, you may have been a part there. of, yep. that uh, in the state of Louisiana, they lose um, uh, a piece of land the size of a football field every 100 minutes. I believe he said they have also lost uh, land the size of Delaware uh, so far due to sea level rise. <laughs> That's huge. Uh, well, it's uh, a timely reminder that it's not just the coastal states that have this concern and that it's important that we need to not just address the symptoms of these, uh, these problems, but also the root causes. And thank you for, for your, uh, your uh, standing up for, for Arizona. We yield to Senator Kramer, please. Thank Again, you. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much for all your work and that of your staff. We're grateful. Thank you, Chairman. And um, <clears throat> it was interesting to listen to Senator Kelly's uh, description of things in Arizona. And I've learned a lot about coastal states and your challenges from you, of course, Senator Whitehouse, who I thought was very modest when he said uh, something like, um, you know, I tend to, some of you know I tend to question. I think, I think he was 
He, really he was helped. understating. He was, he was understating. understating. Yeah, no, I've learned a lot from you all. Um, but I think the whole bill and this committee is an example of the diversity of our great country. And um, it's a joy to work with you, Chairman Carper and Ranking Member Capitol and Senator Cardin and the entire committee. And, and this bill does serve as an exemplary example of what can be done when we work together, when we collaborate, and um, and when we care about our, our nation's water infrastructure and, and our in our land. It, th this legislation for, for those of us in the West prioritizes Western states' water rights and, and work towards uh, better cooperation and better cooperative federalism with the Corps of Engineers uh, that, that is, was envisioned by our nation's founders, of course, and the authors of the Flood Control Act of 1944. It also focuses on recreation. You know, the Corps doesn't oftentimes get credit for this, but it, it, the Corps is a significant federal land management agency often overlooked to, to provide greater recreational opportunities for our constituents. And this bill gives them the flexibility to, uh, to the local jurisdictions for the Corps to make repairs quicker, to provide uh, improved recreational access while requiring the Corps to outline a plan for future use of these resources. It also provides increased funding levels for water and wastewater programs utilized and, and sought after by the small towns throughout North Dakota and throughout the entire country. In a number of instances, I, along with a number of, of you all and my colleagues, I took this, take this once every two year opportunity to provide the core congressional direction on matters that are important to our constituents, including entering into an agreement with the Red River Valley Water Supply Project manager to ensure that water supply from the project reaches its beneficial users and providing the necessary hydrologic uh, analysis to protect our flood control interests in the Suris River Basin. I want to extend my gratitude to the North Dakota Attorney General's Office and North Dakota Department of Water Resources and other stakeholders for their invaluable input throughout this process, helping deliver wins for our state and for all of our states. So thank you again, Mr. Chairman, and congratulations on another job well done. Thank you so much, thank, and, and thanks again for, for your invaluable help. Uh, I, uh, as, as my, my colleagues know, um, I go back and forth to Delaware almost every night on the train, come back uh, in the morning. And this morning I was uh, went a little bit late and I made the train and uh, got on the train and somebody said to me, do you go back and forth every night? And I said, well, just about. And this uh, person said to me, I wouldn't want your job for all the tea in China. And I said, believe it or not, I really love what I do. And he said, why, you guys just fight and never get anything done. And I said, uh, I wish you could come with me today and see what a committee where people work together, members and staff, what we can get done for 50 states with input from all 50 states. It would be a refreshing and encouraging uh, uh, thing to watch. And I'm just glad that um, we have the opportunity to set a good example. And we've done that with the uh, bipartisan infrastructure bill. We do it with all kinds of legislation, but the idea of reporting out something uh, this expansive, this uh, beneficial, again, with a bipartisan unanimous vote is just, for me, it's just very, uh, very rewarding and satisfying. I want to say again to Mary Frances Repco, our staff director, to Adam and every member of our team, especially John Keane, who leads our water team on the Democrat side. Uh, just a great work, great work. I mean, I, it's not done, but uh, we're uh, uh, well on our way and look forward to getting this ball, not just in the red zone, but in the end zone. All right, anybody else with that? No? Some final, some final housekeeping. Thanks, Mary Francis. I want to, uh, to ask unanimous consent to submit for the record letters of support and other items considering the Water Resource Development Act of 2022. I also ask unanimous consent that the staff have authority to make technical and conforming changes to each of the matters approved today. Again, my thanks to every <laughs> to everyone for your participation in this business meeting. and. In the spirit of Star Wars, <laughs> may, may, the four, may the four and the force be with you. All right, and in the words of the King Sisters, teamwork does make the dream work. I think with that, are we done? Yeah, done. Is it a wrap? It's a wrap. Thanks, everyone.